So who says you can't dance at two weddings? I just did that. Two weddings in one night and uh, able to celebrate a both. Jumping back and forth between two weddings. Quite something. Um, quite a celebration. And uh, I guess it can be done. Where there's a will, there's a way. Should only be celebrations in life. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. That's the blessing of the day for a terrific Tuesday, Daphne. <laughs> yes, celebrating. Imagine from one wedding to the next. What's so special about a wedding? Well, it's a union between two halves of one soul that come together. That got lost upon coming into this world, being born. They were born separate. On high, before the souls came down, they were two halves of one soul as one. Come here, they separate. That's why there's seeking out that other half or if you want to call it a better half in order that you can be complete more than that to come welcome to Tani Today I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya we share with Daphne on a terrific Tuesday in South Carolina Rabab is in Morocco good afternoon Julia is in Pennsylvania having a beautiful day. Joseph, a beautiful sunny day in New Jersey. And who else is with us? Joining today, we have Amy in Colorado, Boker Tov. Welcome. Um, AG is, you have to remind me, AG, where you are. Forgot. Andrea in Phoenix, Arizona, welcome. Michelle is joining us. Um, not certain where to remind me. I'm sure one time you did tell me. <laughs> Stan is in London, England. Good afternoon. June, it's very late in Australia. She's joining us there. Jackie is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Shalom. Davida. And Liba are having a Tanya-rific day in New York. Elise is joining us in West Virginia. Um, live with us, yes. Dam in Indonesia, good evening. We have Tim in Texas. Diane is in Arizona, good morning. Sandy in Michigan. Uh, James in Rhode Island, Newport, Rhode Island. Rusty in Texas, David in California, TJ is in Melbourne, Australia. Oh, Michelle's in the Philippines, okay. John in North Carolina, welcome. We have Instagrammers with us, uh, Natalie. Akoy in Lima, Peru. Leslie. One second, folks. Hello. Ah, Rachel in South Carolina. We have Diane in Tilabenta, Marlene in Florida. We have Angelo, New York City. Yan in Mexico. Denise is in New Jersey. Moshe in. No, that's Krish in Sri Lanka. Okay. That might be a first. Welcome. For a first. Chava in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, we have Natalie in Brazil. We have Ruthie, Adam, and Vilma. 
clubhousers. Beautiful. Rina? Okay. All right. It's happening over here. To be or not to be? Am I real? Or am I not real? What does it mean to be authentic? How do we understand that? We're in the midst of understanding pure physics of the universe, pure physics of me, myself, and I. What is that? If we understand that at this very moment, the divine energy of God is animating me, and if that word of God, the breath of his mouth, figuratively, metaphorically speaking, were to be removed, I wouldn't be. I would not be. I would be just a return to the original nothingness that there is before creation. Not that I would return to some form of energy from, a, from, ma from matter. I would become energy because energy is also a being is also creation to something so from energy you can get matter from matter you can revert back to energy because they're both a something but creation is not something from something because god did not start with an amoeba he didn't start with a mustard seed he started with nothing he started with no thing not a thing, right? A thing is something part of the creative force, the creative a part of, of, of the world. So God started without that. So if, I, if he would take away the word that now becomes me, I'd be no thing. But how am I now with that word of God? I am completely nullified to it my whole reality my whole existence my whole being is only that of the word of god that animates me so when we understand that we understand i understand of me that i am absolutely not in a nothing even in this moment but the word of god that animates me so am i or am i not so in the end the I am of me is that I am not. I am not, but absolute no being at all. And I am only authentically and in reality, nothing else but the word of God that animates and brings me into existence. That's my true existence, my true reality. Right? It's not like Oh, I'm something, but the the force of and the word of the the power of God that's in me is a very powerful word, but I'm also something. No, 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 no. My something is only based on that. So really, I am nothing. I'm not. So the I am of me is that I'm not. Ah, but there's a problem. What's that? I'm not experiencing that. Maybe I just said it. <laughs> But that's not my experience. It seems to me that I am. I am a something. I'm tangible. I'm real. So, the author of explains in chapter 3 that we don't comprehend this truth with our physical eyes. The power of God that is in me and in all created things. If, however, the eye were permitted to see and to comprehend the life force and the spirituality that is in me, and for that matter, in all created beings, right? Meaning, it's the word of God, the breath of his mouth, metaphorically, as we've explained previously. Um, 
we become completely nullified to that life force. We would only sense the life force. We wouldn't sense our own being. We would sense as things are absolute nothingness as they were exactly before the six days of creation. That the spiritually the spirituality that flows from God is the only reality of me and all of existence. Hence, there's truly nothing besides God. Anything and everything from the smallest, you know, blade of grass to the most, um, you know, greatest of all the galaxies, the only true reality is God. In this moment, not just that when God will take away the word that the thing doesn't exist, but as it exists, it's totally dependent on the word of God, on the divine flow of energy that is in the created being, in me, that continuously flowing. So my true reality is nothing else but God. I don't, I'm not experiencing, I'm not perceiving it. And I get there. How's that? How's that reality play itself out? But that's a fact. So the I am of me is that I'm not. Or the reality and the authenticity of me is only nothing else but God. The word of God, the power of God that is animating and giving life. Any questions, any thoughts? Heavy duty stuff. Okay. So by transitive analogy, does this mean that our Nisham is also essentially the word of Hashem? That's literally a part, well, good question, um, Hamid. Excellent question. Our soul is actually a part of God. Everything else is, so the, the soul, the divine soul is, is different than the body. Let's leave the divine soul out of it right now. Let's just understand from a physical point of view, there is a piece of God in us that's in the soul. But in the physicality of this world, there's no other reality but God. I, I mean, the truth is the same thing about the soul. The soul is attuned to that. Okay. All right, we got uh, Jerry with us in Texas, in, in Florida. Leia in Florida. Czar. Cindy in Florida. Okay, let's see. Any questions? Oh, Jeff. What is the best way to remain present in that thought that our true existence in reality is only the Word of God? You know, when you're going through a difficult moment, Think about that, that God is animating you and your reality at that moment. It means God is present and not distant. And which will help us to get through the challenge in the moment. God is there. If God is there, goodness is there. And then before, if we are attuned to that, will be connected in that moment. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff. Reminded TRC this Thursday at 4.30.
New York time, Montreal time. Okay. Rambam coming up. John, do some people have greater light that seems to exude from their existence? Yeah, but that's that's not to that's very good, John. There is the fact of that we exist, and then there is the uniqueness in how we exist. And in that respect. Um, there's a distinction in the uniqueness. Yeah. Torah studies tonight, I'm not certain yet. I don't know if there will be. If enough people will want it, then yes. <laughs> Private message me. Okay. Rambam coming up. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zich and Kadesh, Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have an amazing, great day. Thank you for joining.